thinking. What is Callie up to now? Well, there aren't many places to snorkel here in New York City, where I live, so... I decided we were going to take an imaginary journey to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. It's another natural wonder of the world. The Great Barrier Reef is like hundreds of islands of rock and coral that go in and out of the ocean. So many cool fish and other creatures live there that I thought we just had to see it for ourselves. Are you ready? Okay, close your eyes and think Great Barrier Reef. Think fishies. Think sea creatures. Okay, open your eyes. We made it, friends. We're there. I guess if you were actually underwater, I couldn't talk. So let's take a look around. to come up for air for a bit. When my mom was helping me read about the Great Barrier Reef, she read that it has its own ecosystem. That is a big word, but it just means a bunch of living things that help each other survive. They are living for each other. What does that mean? You can live for someone else? I'm gonna keep taking an imaginary look around while we hear our Bible story for today. It is time for today's Bible story from the book of Psalms, chapter 112. Today, we are looking at yet another psalm. Remember, psalms are like songs or prayers that we give to God as a way of worshiping or showing God just how awesome and powerful we believe God is. Sometimes in life, what we see isn't so wonderful. Sometimes the things we do aren't so wonderful. Even the songwriter, didn't always make the best choices. Sometimes he made really poor choices that hurt himself and others. And he knew that God didn't want his people just to talk about loving God. God wants us to show that we love God by the things we do. We need to live for God. And that's what Psalms 112 is about. Verse one says, blessed are those who fear the Lord and who delight in his commands. This means that the number one thing we can do is to live for God and is to obey what God says, but not just obey. We can gladly obey and do what God tells us to do. We can smile when we give something to someone who needs it. We can hum a cheery tune when we help someone who is struggling. We can do a happy dance when we go to church every week. Verse six through eight says, surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting the Lord. Their hearts are secure and they will have no fear. This means that when we listen to God, we don't have to be afraid of anyone or anything else because God will take care of us. We keep doing what God wants us to do even when we don't get it all right. God sees our hearts. When God sees that our hearts are set on following God with everything from our head to our toes, it shows that we can worship by living for God. Whoa, I get it now. Living for God means I have to show how much I love God by caring for everyone around me. The fish, sea turtles, coral, and all the living things in the Great Barrier Reef live to help each other. And just like that, we can worship God by helping others. When we do that, we are living for God. My mom was reading from my book about ways we can actually help the Great Barrier Reef stay alive. You want to hear them? One, don't waste food. That means eat all your peas. Two, don't waste water. 
That means turn the water off when you brush your teeth. Three, ride with friends or ask your parents if you can pick up people and ride together to church. Four, don't throw away a lot of plastic bags. If you have toys made out of plastic, make sure you're going to keep them for a while and donate them to other kids when you get tired of them. Five, ask your parents to unplug things when they aren't using them. Grown-ups can forget that sometimes. Isn't it cool to know that we can worship God by actually doing things to help others and help God's creation? Remember, we have only one God, but there are many ways to worship. We can sing a song or say a prayer before we go to sleep. God is listening to us from the moment we awake. God, I just want to say that I think you're really great. God, you are wonderful, so full of wonder. God, you are wonderful, so full of wonder. So full of wonder. So full of wonder. God, you are wonderful. How can we say we love God? What are some other ways?